The slate-colored dark-eyed junco is a very common bird around my backyard, as well as most of North America. It has been a favorite bird for me for quite some time now, and I think they're great birds for practicing small songbird photography. Being such a common bird, you can find them just about anywhere with coniferous trees nearby. Which, as a bonus, means you usually don't have to go far from home to get decent photos. Why? What are you doing? Taking pictures of birds. Why are you in the window? To take pictures of birds. You are fully dressed. You can go outside. This is a good thing for people just starting in bird photography. As if you do miss some shots, it probably won't be as upsetting as you'll most likely get more chances. In my opinion, practicing on common birds is a good idea. That way you're more likely to nail the shot of that one bird that you rarely see instead of it just getting away yet again. Which totally didn't happen to me with this pine grosbeak last summer. The slate junco is the one that I have in my location, so that's the one that I'll feature in my video. They have a white belly and a darker gray back, with a small pale beak and almost black eyes, and I think they're monochromatically adorable. They also have prominent white outer tail feathers, which are usually visible when in flight. I did have a perfect feather, which I swear was left as a gift for me after feeding them. However, that was promptly eaten by this evil little monster. The contrasting colors of the slate juncos can make exposing a little tricky though, either overexposing the belly or underexposing their backs. I tend to err more on the dark side as hiding the noise in the feather pattern is easier than trying to recover blown highlights. At least the feathers aren't too glossy, which does help in direct or harsh sunlight. Being a medium-sized sparrow, they tend to fly quite quickly, like most small birds, with lots of wing beats per minute. This can make it a lot more difficult to get bird in flight shots. It's not just me struggling with that, is it? Typically, with smaller, faster birds, you'll need really fast shutter speeds usually requiring boosting that ISO, which can increase the noise in your pictures. However, juncos are birds of the ground. You can usually find them hopping around in the grass, or around bases of trees and shrubbery, and even perched, usually on lower branches or other objects low to the ground. With the ones that I have found all choosing to nest in or around densely packed thickets of low branches. Getting low to the ground with your camera, or catching them when they are perched, is a good way to get some sharper shots with lower shutter speeds. And this also allows you to shoot in different weather conditions that might not have the needed light, but can add a lot more atmosphere to the photo. This is also a good way to photograph some of their silly personalities watching them jump around and interact with each other, or just using their little feet and long claws to dig around in the snow. These birds come out in lots of different types of weather even in the winter during snowstorms. While some juncos migrate, there's probably a good chance you can still find them in the winter around your area when all the other birds left you and your camera sitting alone in the cold. Going back to their feathers while talking about winter, these birds are even cuter in the winter months as they get pretty chonky, having about 30% more feathers by weight than they do in the summer. If you would like to attract more juncos to your backyard, it shouldn't be too hard. They are granivorous, meaning foods like hulled sunflower seeds, white proso millet, 
and cracked corn can all be offered, preferably on low platform or tray feeders. Most of the time they will clean up the seeds that other birds drop from feeders too. And when I offer them seeds, I tend to just scatter handfuls on the ground. Using recorded bird calls can help as well. I use the Merlin app to ID my birds most of the time, and the large catalog of sounds is a good tool in attracting other birds. I spent a lot of time at our camper with a few slate joncos too. One particularly scruffy bird I liked, or felt bad for, I don't know, was this guy. I named him Drumstick. It wasn't until after giving him a name, I realized he actually kinda had a drumstick. I named this bird Drumsticks. And now I feel bad. Uh, but I love him anyway, and can't wait to check on him once the weather gets nicer again. I really enjoy watching these little birds, and as a beginner in bird photography, I think they're a great little creature to spend some time with while practicing. The contrasting colors and quick quirky nature can make photographing them a bit tricky, but can also help with learning shutter speeds and exposures. Being so widespread and common means it's not the worst if you do miss the shot. Slate-colored dark-eyed juncos are both adorable and friendly. How can you not like these little feathered friends? <laughs>